Empowering women and advocating for equality in education on a global scale has been the life's work of my next guest. Dr. Tara Trent is an educator and humanitarian. She's the author of a new book called The Awakened Woman, Remembering and Reigniting Our Sacred Dreams. She's also the founder of the Tara International a Foundation that has built schools and improved the learning condition of over 5,000 students in her home country of Zimbabwe. And she joins us right now to talk about the book. Uh, when you talk about this when it comes to education, is, are you speaking specifically uh, the motherland or just when it comes to education globally? Education globally. I realized that earlier on education was very important because I didn't have a chance to get that education when I was young. And I grew up in a country that was known as Rhodesia, and today it's Zimbabwe. So mm -hmm. I grew up during the war where girls were denied the right to an education. Now, first of all, again, for folks who, who don't know, uh, girls were denied the right to education. Rhodesia now Zimbabwe was was white led essentially was the same as South Africa yes under apartheid yes uh, and then of course when Mugabe uh, led uh, the revolution there and then he becomes president and then pretty much does the exact same thing as, as the folks who were running Rhodesia denying opportunities and so is it still the case young girls in Zimbabwe can't get an education or has it changed no it has changed tremendously I grew up during the Rhodesian time when um, black people were denied education and uh, you know I always talk about coming from a long line of generations of women women who had been denied education ended up getting married off when they were young my great-grandmother was married off when she was very young before she could define her own dreams. My grandmother uh, went through the same process and my mother and here I was 18 years of age I was already a mother of four and one of the babies died as an infant because I could not produce enough milk. I had no high school education. I had nothing. I was just a woman bound to follow the same pathway that generations of women before me had gone through. Also, uh, I remember when Oprah uh, opened her school in South Africa, and then there were a lot of people who were critical, how, you know, why is she doing this in the United States? And folks here don't understand that it's not like you have publicly financed education uh, in many African nations. Mm -hmm. Education is private. And so when she opened the school, it was like, uh, it's called providing educational opportunities. And so people just assume that, oh, around the world, it's the same as it is in the United States. No, you don't necessarily have public school. No, we don't. And also the other thing is many people, they think Africa is all urban. We have children that are in the rural areas who walk long distances to get that education, to get to learn A, B, C, D. They have to walk. 10 miles to school without the ability to have any resources with them. So education is a fundamental right. We cannot live in a society where we have 62 million girls that are denied of education. Whether they are in Africa, whether they are in Latin America, education is a right. What kind of things have you seen long term that affect the world when young girls receive an education? They become more empowered because when you create that platform for young girls to get an education, they grow up into these more empowered women. Many women are being silenced and it's not only in Africa, even here in America. Women get silenced because they don't know their rights, because they have been denied to have access to those rights, denied to have education. And so when you educate an individual, I always tell this story, when I was young, I grew up during the war and there was this freedom fighter and he stood up and he said, to educate is to empower, to empower is to liberate, to liberate is to enable individuals to gain their dignity. Without education, young women don't have any dignity at all. What's the best thing we can do um, to help uh, further this cause, to help, you know, provide education for those around the world, you know, globally, you know, young women that, you know, aren't afforded the same opportunities as young men in their home countries? Funding. Education is critical. You know, I, I, I know there are studies, and even uh, Kofi Anani, the Secretary General, former Secretary General, talks about 
when you create funding for educating girls and women, you are creating an empowerment platform for women to rise and never to be marginalized. It's easy to oppress an uneducated woman. Yeah. Did you find true. that this was a common theme throughout many of the countries in Africa that were colonized? Yes. Lack of yes. educational opportunities for Lack women? Lack of education because... Just like in America, if you keep folks from educa being educated, then you can keep them in slavery. Yes, yes, and that is so true. So you would find that uh, countries that were colonized, one thing, the main key thing that was taken out of those countries was education. Because once you educate somebody, you open their eyes. Mm -hmm. You open the way they think. Mm -hmm. And you can't enslave or oppress an educated person. You can. But within mm -hmm. some time, they'll begin to realize this is oppression. It's, it's called best. freedom. Yes. That's why, that's why the free slaves uh, figured out uh, after, uh, uh, after, of course, uh, slavery. And James D. Anderson breaks down in his book, Education of Blacks in the South, yeah. 1860, 1865, where they said uh, it must be something, it has to be powerful because if I could be killed, yeah for being taught how to read, mm -hmm. it must be something about that. Exactly. That must be powerful. Yes. Folks, Oprah had this to say about Doc's book. Uh, if you've ever had a dream, a longing, a desire, but thought to yourself, no way, I could never. I don't have the time, money, resources, skills, courage. This book is for you. If you've ever looked at the world and felt an aching for one of its many hurts or injustices, this book is for you. If you know the power of sisterhood, or need to know its power, this book is for you. It is awake, The Awakened Woman, Remembering and Reigniting Our Sacred Dreams. Dr. Tara Trent, she will be, of course, a book signing tonight in D.C. at All Souls Church at 6 p.m. Doc, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much right. for having Thank me. You. Thank you. All right. Three days on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. No. Hell no. no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.